Okay, in this Debaco University video, we're going to be exploring what the Phylos is a Galaxy public database can tell you and kind of the information you can gain from it that you have access to. So it's a great way to kind of spend some time researching some strains you might be familiar with and also discovering some new ones. So it's just a good uh, to have an idea of the power or what it's able to actually show you. So first off, this is a link to the website here, and I want to make note that it may take a little time to load, but it is worth the wait. Your browser may take a little time to kind of might ask, do you want to wait? And the answer is yes. I always tell people it takes about like 30 seconds potentially to load. Um, usually it's a little bit less than that, but just be patient with letting it load because it is loading a lot of information. So we're here, I'm just going to give an example, I'll kind of go through, and I chose to look at none other than um, Charlotte's Web. And we can clearly see that the, um, you know, it's been shown to reduce epilepsies, have another video describing some of the story. So here we're just going to look at one, two, three, the four uh, that I put little highlights around here that you can search on uh, Charlotte's Web here within the Phylox Galaxy. Now what's interesting is while these are all listed as Charlotte's Web from different um, people that submitted it, different companies that may have submitted it, they also have very different results. So it's important to be an informed consumer as well. So this is just looking at you know some of the information that is provided there. Again, looking at our Charlotte's Web, I have the links to all these right here. And we can see I keep them in the same order here with the, the four listed here. Now, with the, these four uh, that were submitted by different companies or people, one's listed just as anonymous, looking at the closest genetic relatives. So you can see some have a very diversified set of genetic relatives, some very simplified. Here there's 58. 4, 11, and 2 relatives. So what are other strains related to? This can help start to develop a general idea of the strains most closely related. Some listed here have as few as 2 and as many as 58. So again, very diversified here in looking at potential for closeness in genetic relatives. Then if we look here at the kind of the population profile here, where we're looking at kind of this example here of CBD, skunk, berry, OG Kush, um, many uh, hemp, you know, what's kind of in that? Well, this indicates the heritage of the samples, what may it be related to based on the genetic profile. One sample has nearly a complete relation of, uh, to CBD population, while others have almost no relation. And we could see this one here, definitely high on CBD and a very little skunk. In comparison, this one over here, there's that CBD is that very thin little line uh, right there. Um, so very different here in the genotype report, even though they all are listed as Charlotte's Web. I'm sorry if you're colorblind, might be a little hard to distinguish some of these colors, but we can clearly hopefully see that there's one really large bar here and that same bar is represented by the very thin bar uh, right over here. Then we get to genetic novelty, and this provides an idea of how unique or rare the genetics are compared to others in the database. Rare genetics, I want to just make our note, are not necessarily better genetics, so just keep that in mind. Um, all fall in the wide common range. A lot of these are considered to be common, not necessarily, again, not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it just gives you an idea of how common those genetics may be. Now the variation that occurs, how diverse is a genetic profile? Note that the lower the variation, the more likely the plant in a population will perform is similar. What this means, if you have a high degree of variation and you grow a lot of plants, you're gonna see a very high amount of variability from one plant to the next. The middle two strains offer a more consistency, which can be especially important in large populations of plants being grown, in the sense that they're going to be more uniform. You're not going to have massively tall than short plants, for example. You're going to have a little bit more uniformity uh, across uh, the field there in general. Then we get to genetically distant varieties. So if you're looking for a different genetic base to cross, this provides some suggestions for strains that can help increase the variation in resulting offspring. Only cushions appear in all reports. Again, it can kind of just give an idea if you're looking at breeding or getting into the breeding aspect, what might you breed into it? You know, here's some examples here. Now it's important that all of these that we've been looking at here are all Charlotte's or listed as Charlotte's Web, but we can see through all of these reports the variability that we get in all of these. So it's just kind of it's important to note that there is this variability even though everything is called Charlotte's Web. 
So the reason why I make note of that is this quick comparison hopefully shows the great variability that can exist for plant material that may all have the same name. So buyer beware asking for a coa certificate of authenticity and other supporting documentation is important to make sure you know what you're getting so again just sticking with the charlotte's web theme these are all charlotte's web this one's the book from 1952 this is the 1973 film and this is the 2006 film all these are charlotte's web but all these are very different same thing with the cannabis strains as well so make sure you're paying for your getting or at least you know what you're getting with some sort of certificate and documentation and it's up to you the buyer purchaser to request this documentation that hopefully can be provided by who's ever supplying it if you always want to check you could send the sample out yourself and hopefully it comes back with what the person who sent it to you the supplier who sent it to you said that you're paying for so again buyer beware always seek documentation to ensure you're getting what you expect